This is the shop in all of its disaster. I guess I should probably change the angle of the phone or whatnot, but you know how I keep saying, um, I always clean your toys before you put them away. Well, I only have really one toy and she's clean. Everything else in here is a complete fucking disaster. This is several years of neglect. This is, this is just literally doing project after project after project and not properly cleaning up and not properly putting away and starting the next job before the first one's done and then starting the third job before the second one's done and starting the sixth job before the fourth and the fifth or even remotely through thought process and then going back to the fourth and the fifth and working on them a little bit and before they're done going back to the sixth and not finishing it and then going back to the second one and finishing it the one you started probably the year before and uh Apparently that's, that's very mechanic after a year and a half. Yeah. About that a year and a half of, of doing recording and production and everything else of the, the podcast and somewhere in the neighborhood of 70 guests We're in the middle of doing the recruiter series. Actually, no, I'm done recording the recruiter series. I've got a couple of episodes published, sorry, produced of the recruiter series. And it's now waiting to go out because it's got a scheduled queue because this video might just go out raw before that kind of vloggy thing. See, this is completely unfucking prepared. So I might just do the, the whole schmazzle, just completely unprepared, unscripted, un everything. No. And it might just go out raw because uh, I don't have time for that shit. And uh, what I notice is that the more I am myself, <laughs> my idiot self uh the better the better i am and uh, the better the content itself is essentially uh becomes uh we'll see what this looks like afterwards but typically you're supposed to have some kind of thought process and you know promotsy and and marcus both talk about having proof and an action plan and then what you're going to deliver and then deliver on it uh this is not that <laughs> Um, yeah, so, um, I've, 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 I've been attacked for a long time and I started turning wrenches in 2001, 2002 professionally. I've been turning wrenches an awful lot longer than that. Speaking of an awful lot longer than that, something that might be relevant. Um, this is, this is kind of one of those things where it's generational, right? So my great great grandfather my great grandfather um opened a plymouth dealership i think in 1938 and uh they ran that plymouth dealership quite successfully for a long time my great grandfather had he had five boys it was uh john joe george ray and alvin and uh all the boys worked in the shop or in the dealership or for the dealership in some capacity in some way for a long time. I don't know when my great grandfather passed, but my great uncle John solely worked in the shop as far as I know for a long period of time and he passed. I'm not sure when in the period of time there, but I I do know for a fact they closed down the dealership in October of 83, a month before I was born. And there's Jeffers Sales and Service Limited. And um, that's that sign is more than 40 years old. And I'm going to keep that around as long as I can. But one could say that I have cars in my blood. Or rather, I have automotive or more specifically mechanic work in my blood because I'm finding myself a whole lot more intrigued about the two wheel things these days. Cause there's just something about them. Majority of my experience though has been on the four wheel kind. And that's what the last couple of decades of efforts been about. So I have tens of thousands of dollars worth of tools, even still some of which I've sold. I've sold toolboxes and pieces I'm left with. What you see over there, the toolbox that's underneath me right now, or rather what's underneath the 
the camera. I've got my grandfather's set over there. He died a couple years ago. And a lot of his tools I gotta still sort through that I I was given. But therein lies a bit of the the rub. Again, a bit cluster brained right now, but it was his death, so my grandpa Sheffer, this one. He died in 08. He died just before the recession of 08. That was a hard time. A hard time for many. It was a real hard time for me. And then three years ago, my grandpa Taylor died. And I had a, a an apostrophe, as a villain in a Disney movie would have said, that I was being greedy. I was being an idiot. I was being self-centered. And I was being a know-it-all. I was trying to be a consultant, thinking that I could fix the world. And yet my two grandfathers gave their entire lives to their communities in some capacity. So thus the story of wrench turners functionally kind of started without starting because I didn't know what the hell the wrench turners meant or even if it was a thing at that stage. I just knew I had to give back to my community. First and foremost, I needed to figure out what the community was. That kind of seems like a no-brainer. I got 20 years in automotive. That's my fucking community. Well, number two, what is it I'm going to do to give back to my community? Fuck knows. So I did the smart thing. Law of averages. That uh, I journaled. So I spent 15 minutes every day researching, what I, researching about automotive in all kinds of different ways. Talk about it, mechanics and the industry, service and sales. And I came across one night this article about suicide and profession and i get to read in this article only to find out mechanics are number three meaning that in 2016 348 mechanics took their own lives and that placed them in the top three professions that commit suicide so given that in my life i had a very close friend of mine and apprentice um commit suicide i've had two techs that i work with over the last 20 years attempt and at least a dozen more over my career that I've used to work with or worked with in some capacity or worked around in some capacity as the, the purple telephone goes either succeed or attempt. And given my own semicolon nature, I need to do something about my mental health and mechanics. Now, I am not a therapist. I am not a registered anything of any kind other than the fucking licensed te technician. So what the fuck can I do? Well, the one thing more than anything that I've been in the last two and a half years is I've been in a year. I don't know shit from shit, but I can listen. And that kind of turned into a bit of coaching, which I've done successfully the last two and a half years for free until I can't do it for free anymore which we're at because the emotional burden that, it, that i have to take on in order to do it is too much so i have to not do it for free which means that it limits the number of people that i do it with and secondly also means that the people that i do it with take it seriously because they're paying for it next thing i did was because i don't know shit from shit but i'm a mechanic i like facts figure out what the fuck is wrong and then fix it so i created a survey now surveys are hard Mostly because as mechanics, we don't trust anybody. Most of the time, we can't even fucking trust our baymates to not take the gravy that we should have got in the first place. So it's hard to get people to trust you to take the damn survey to give you information so that you can fix shit for them. So that's been an uphill battle. I got almost 500 survey submissions to date in the last two years, but that's been, that's been a hike of work. But it's given back between the coaching and the survey, and all the content I've made, and the podcast, I'd like to think I'm actually giving back to the community and, and making my grandfathers proud. So the next step is turning all that coaching, and all that content, and all that survey data into something that I think is actually going to make some really direct impact, which is leadership training for mechanics. Now, I'm not the most idyllic leader. I still have a lot to learn. But now I've got a whole lot of data, a whole lot of experience talking to a whole lot of people. And I found a whole lot of things, but a whole lot of stuff about the stuff that people aren't doing. So instead of me having to be the expert, because I spent 20 years leading, I spent the last two and a half solid years learning about 
how to be a better mechanic, how to be a better leader, and what role, what things we as mechanics need to do to be healthier, to be happier, to be more productive. So I started the, the Sweaty Leader, the sweatyleader.com. If you want to go check it out, I'm taking on little, little groups at a time and I'm going to start sharing some of that stuff in a more group setting. And right now I'm doing them from free because I'm doing five on one, not one on one. If you show up, you're going to learn something. If you don't show up, you don't show up. You get to stay where you're at. I'm here. It's where I'm at. You want to meet me where I'm at and I can teach you something by all means. Otherwise, I'm going to clean my shop for a few minutes and I'm going to go inside. Maybe I should probably put you guys on a more stable service, which I'll do here in a second. That wouldn't be very fair to you guys to make you wobble and shake all over the place. Wobble baby, wobble baby, wobble baby. No, 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 no. It's very... Oh. Let's go down the way there. You fucking see what I'm doing? Huh? Kinda? Maybe? It's just a wide angle shot, I guess. Maybe not wide enough, though. Usually you cut that shit out, and but I'm not gonna. That takes too much fucking time. No, no, no. By the way, if you want to know which impact tool... Somebody was going around TikTok or something... And so they can tell what kind of mechanic you are with what kind of cordless shit you have. This shit works. And the cool thing is, I got most of the shit. And you know why I like the DeWalt ones? Because I can always see them. The yellow stands out. For those of you that are color stupid, like me, not color blind, color stupid. Genuinely speaking, that's what the autometrist called me. Color stupid. Because I can see all the damn colors. I just don't really know what they are in context. And I've explained this before, but I'll say it again because some of y'all may not have seen this and Lord knows when he actually fucking sees this, but my color stupid means that I can see all the same colors that y'all see. I can see them all. But only if there is simple context provided. Meaning, take this white piece of paper. If you put a blue dot, and I don't want to hear anybody saying, well, what color blue is it? Is it, is it off blue? Is it the color of the sky blue? No, blue. Just put blue on this damn piece of paper. If you put blue on this paper, I'll tell you it's blue. If you put purple on this paper, like Barney blue, or sorry, Barney, <laughs> part of the color, color stupid. If you put Barney purple on this, I'll tell you it's purple. But if you put both the purple and the blue on this page, I couldn't tell you which one's which. Color stupid. That might be why my favorite color is white. I always know white. If any of y'all know if there's a better way to store the quad lock stuff, all the extras, because I know this is probably not, this is the, the, the technically not the first bike. The, the SV is technically the first bike I've ever owned. And as you can see, I bought the bike broken. I bought parts, parts for it to fix it. But then I didn't touch it. I even so went so far as to buy it in a nice lift. I haven't fucking touched it. And then I bought the piece of shit that's behind it, which is really, 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 really broken. And I think is a really, 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 really old Honda uh, 600, CBR 600. It's really, 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 really broken. Of course, I didn't touch it. And then last year, I said, fuck it. And went out and bought that. And I love it. But there's no way it's the only bike I ever own. Bikes, plural. There's, there's, I'll have more. So some of this shit might come in handy later. But I have a tendency of losing this kind of shit. So I don't really know where to put it. But unfortunately, when I do things like this and I put it on my toolbox, for it to just sit on my toolbox, it just sits on my toolbox and then I have less space on my toolbox to use. Does anybody still clean their batteries with one of these? I haven't used this in ages. I don't know why it's sitting out. Like, look at the reamer on that bad boy. You see it? Look at the reamer. I'd be afraid of breaking the new terminals. It's got no meat left on them. Those new terminals are just... Whatever. I used to use this all the time. Dodge. I don't even know where to put it. Yeah, <laughs> That's what she said. Oh, I haven't played golf in two years. Well, that's pretty chilly. I think it's time to go in. The fuck? 14. What's in the 14 spot? 14. What the fuck is... 14. Three A's. Yep. Nope. Uh, the fuck? Where the fuck are you guys from? Ah, yeah. 
I hope you enjoyed the rambling. Maybe I'll end this one like I always do. You know what I mean? Some of you'll know. Say it with me. Say it with me. Negative pushes, positive pulls. Always clean your toys before you put them away.